Good morning to you on this Thursday, February 29th, 2024. Welcome to another Morning Barbados presentation. I'm Tisha Hines, and I'll be here with you until 8 o'clock this morning, along with the entire CBC team. And we are at Standard in Wildy. That's where we're coming to you live. Still looking pretty dark outside. And we had some drizzles early this morning. But that's because maybe I was uh, dumping a little on the sunshine yesterday. You really have to be careful what you ask for. A special good morning to those of you who are hustling and bustling to get through the doors. I know sometimes we have our set times to go. And if we miss those times, it can be difficult times on the roads around Barbados. So make sure you get out on time so you make it in at the time you need to. So we have a great show planned for you today. But before we do, we want to say a very special good morning to all of the Leaplings. That's right. It's a leap year. That's why we have a 29th of February. So for those celebrating their birthday officially on the day every four years, happy birthday to you. I wish they would put on the Lil Rick birthday song because I think that that might be the most popular birthday song. Yes. <laughs> so if you're celebrating uh, your birthday today, happy birthday to you. My goddaughter Ashley is a leapling, uh, so she celebrates today. So Ashes, happy birthday to you, beautiful girl. I wish you the happiest of birthdays today. I want to say a special thank you to David Vaughn of Hamilton, Ontario in Canada for taking the time to send an email expressing his enjoyment for Morning Barbados. And we get lots of emails every single day and messages. So for those of you enjoying the new space here at Standard, you definitely should come on down and check it out. And of course, our friends here at Standard have told us that they've received quite a few calls as well. And lots of you have been coming in to take a look, a closer look at some of the things you've been seeing. You're going to get that opportunity today too, because I'm going to be sharing with you some of my favorite things, all right? So that is all coming up today. Plus, we are going to tell you what's happening today is Q in the community. So make sure you get out and be a part of it. It's at Project House Grounds, Sturges in St. Thomas. Uh, you have due notice. You have ample notice. You have nothing to excuse not being there for Project House Grounds Q in the community coming up today. So make sure you follow Q. Kimberly is going to be there. Uh, Jaquila is usually there. Andre is in the studio. And of course, those guys are going to make sure that you have a good time. Q is always a fantastic time, okay? So make sure you get on out to Q. And of course, we usually have the Q bus. So you don't have anything to worry about in terms of transportation and getting there. Now we're going to tell you about Hoofbeats again 2024, an art exhibition. Frank Levine Jr. will be in with Harrietta Bovell, both artists. Uh, Harrietta is the curator with the Winifred Cumberbatch Garden Art Gallery. And the Barbados Turf Club, Barbados Gold Cup is presenting this particular presentation. Hoofbeats again 2024. So we're going to share that with you. Uh, that, of course, is coming up. We'll also share a few of the pieces that you can expect to see once you go over there. Uh, that promises to be pretty exciting. I know a lot of people are very excited about horse racing, so you get out throughout the year. But uh, the Sandy Lane Gold Cup is, of course, top tier. That's where you, you get all the action. And we're doubling up on uh, telling you about... Uh, Caribbean art today because the CAFA fair is coming up and we're hoping that Anderson Pilgrim can make it in. He actually just uh, arrived on a flight from New York late last night and uh, he's scheduled to be here with us this morning. So fingers crossed, we're going to play that by ear. So we're going to let you know if he indeed makes it and that is going to be happening from the 6th of March. So we're going to make sure that we go, you know how it is with live TV and I'd love to be honest with you, you know, he can't fool you. So if he gets here, we'll let you know. But I know how it is, you know, traveling. And then they're like an hour behind and, you know, the time difference it might be a little jet lag uh, preparing to come. So uh, he's, he promised to be here, but we'll see if he's able to make it. 
we will tell you all about that fantastic fair that's been going on for a number of years. As a matter of fact, uh, interviewing Anderson Pilgrim and an American artist for the CAFA fair many, many years ago is how I met someone who became my very good friend, one of my closest friends in my life. So, you know, that fair holds, that art fair holds a very close place to me as well. We're also going to share some of what's happening on social media. Uh, we want to make sure that you stay in tune with what's happening in, um, on social media. And there is a Bajan everywhere. Just bear, bear that in mind. And we will um, expound on it a little bit more. So I'll continue to tell you about what's coming up this morning as we go on through. I'm going to be presenting some of my favorite things here at Standard, the four top picks that is also coming up. But as I told you, we're looking toward Gold Cup 2024, the Sandy Lane Gold Cup. There was a big rehearsal yesterday, so we certainly are looking forward to all that will bring. And uh, we are mounting a broadcast. We didn't last year. Uh, Sports Max, they were the ones who were taking in everything. This year, we're going to make sure that you take in some of the action with us as we head on over to the Sandy Lane Gold Cup. And we're switching things up a little bit. So today, our salute to an exceptional youth is also a young man who is going to be a part of our commentary team for Gold Cup for 2024. How about that? So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. And this young man has an amazing story. He's going to be with us on Saturday from just after four. So help me say good morning to Rashawn Ali. And good morning to you. Good morning, Tisha. Good morning, Barbados. Good to have you with us. So talk to me. You, you were the very first young commentator, or you were the youngest commentator at the Garrison Savannah for horse racing. Talk to me about that. How did you get into horse racing, first of all? Uh, so my family, they are big into horse racing. My dad and his dad, uh, we've been going to the track for as long as I can remember. Um, I went as a fan, and then I was there all the time just running in between races, you know, racing and commentary, like, as it's going. So I wanted to be a jockey, and as you can see, I quickly outgrew <laughs> that. And being over 200 pounds, I wouldn't have been very successful. And I just wanted another avenue to get into the sport, um, actively into the sport. And there was this horse called Apostle, a fan favorite. And there was a race that he won, and I was able to recite that race going, going, going all the time. So I used that as an avenue, and I reached out when I was very young to Mrs. Pierce, the CEO of the Turf Club. And she was more than willing to give me the opportunity. So I started out doing basic on-air stuff, like... Uh, doing the starters and runners and weights and then by the time I was 18 I was calling actual live racing and that was in 2019 and I did that through 2021. That is an amazing story. What gave you that extra courage to call uh, Mrs. Rosette Pierce and say hey I'm 16 years old and I think I can commentate horse racing? Uh, so my mentor from the race that I was talking about with Apostle he was the person who I was like idolizing. His name is Kelly Walker, and I was working with him a lot when I was younger. He gave my first pair of binoculars, and he was a commentator. To you know, watch the horses going around yes, the track? Yes, to watch the horses you going around really the track. You were really a fan. Oh, uh, I, was, I was crazy behind but it. Let me say you are a I fan. Still, yeah, still am a fan, and he's the one that said, hey, I think you're good enough. It doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, talent doesn't you know, care about how old you are. So if you want to do this, and if you're going to take it seriously, by all means, reach out, and I, you have my support. And they were very welcoming at the Turf Club. They were very surprised, obviously, because I was 16. But I reached out, and they were like, go for it. And it was an amazing experience. Well, obviously, because here you are uh, commentating on a broadcast that I would imagine you would have grown up right. watching. Exactly. It's like I go to Gold Cup every every year this was my Kentucky our version of the Kentucky Derby our biggest day of the year so it's very exciting one to be on the side of a fan and seeing the coverage and being a part of it but now being on the other side of the camera where I get to bring that uh, information that broadcast to other people other young Rashawns for example it's really uh, an honor and a thrill that's truly beautiful and speaking of young Rashawns we love to salute young people so I mean congratulations thank you so to much to you uh, this is just a really feel-good story. 
because I see a lot of the little ones running around. As a matter of fact, I've spent a lot of time at the, the, the Garrison Savannah for the, over the last few days uh, as we've been preparing for Gold Cup. And a little girl, maybe this tall, if she's two years old, she's, she's old. old. Uh, but she had a horse, a little horsey, and she was pointing at the, the other horse in the winner's circle. And the only word she was saying for the whole time she was there was horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, that's when it starts. That's probably when I was indoctrinated. It's like you you start, you just keep going, and then you bend a race book into a whip, and you're sitting on a railing or your dad's shoulders. And but probably that's why I wanted to be a jockey. But again, that dream went through the window. But that's when it starts. That's when you you know, because that's all you know in your life. You're growing up. You're seeing the horses. They're such magnificent animals, and you just want to be around them, and you want to be a part of the sport. And that is when it starts. When you are that small. You know, and it's never too late for anyone to get into the sport, but really the young ones, when their eyes light up, when the horses pass. Um, I have a younger sister, and I took her to the track when I was here last summer, and you could just see the pure euphoria in her face when horses pass, and it was, it's amazing to see. That's true. I want you to take us along for uh, the point in time where you realize, I, I love horses a lot. You, you mentioned that it's a generational, intergenerational thing. So, you know, what was, when it was time for horse racing or time to go down to the track, what were conversations like in your home? Uh, so conversations in my home um, about horse racing are frequent. They can be from minutes in passing to hours. If you go in our home, there's old race books spanning years. My grandmother probably doesn't like that, but, you know, uh, but it was just like everyone is into horse racing and we are having these conversations so I think I don't know if there's ever there's ever been a point where okay, I love horse racing it's just I know that I've loved horse racing from the get-go and it's just been something that my family has rallied around me and supported because a f not everyone in my family loves horse racing but the majority does and we they just continue to push me they're like whatever you want to do we'll support and that's how it's been Everyone's just supported me in horse racing, and horse racing's just been running through my veins from the time I was born. What's the very first horse race that you remember uh, maybe standing and watching? I think there are names that are stuck in my head only because maybe uh, the late Carew kind of memorialized them in song. In ben Tom yeah. and Stafford Prince. And, you know, I remember that time where, pardon me, Sandy Lane Crew. Uh, where it was the Coxburg Gold right. Cup, and we looked forward to the majorettes. And uh, for me, uh, it wasn't horse racing every day, but most certainly the place that the Gold Cup held in Barbadian's heart was, was this was the place to be. You had to be at the Gold Cup. So I've seen so many, obviously, old footage of the Coxburg Gold Cup, and it was crazy just seeing the turnout. Like, the rails are people. You can't see the rails. It's just people you know, flooding the garrison. For my generation, I've only experienced the Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Um, but the first race that I think I remember is with a horse called Talk About Lucky. And that's when it was small enough to be on my dad's shoulders. I guess he was excited she was winning. And I remember the, like, being completely terrified because he was jumping up and down. And I can just feel you know, no control of how he's moving. I'm on his shoulders. I'm like absolutely scared. Not scream or anything, but it was just very you know unsettling to be in that moment but i remember talk about lucky who was very unlucky in a lot of gold cups that she was in um but yeah that's the first horse race i think i remember is talk about lucky which is like early 2000s so i would, would have been about three or four well obviously the talk about lucky was referring to you staying on those shoulders yes right with exactly. all of that excitement exactly. so maybe the horse was unlucky but you most certainly much, very much so were not yeah. How were you able to, to juggle your love for horse racing, this extra activity, uh, getting into commentary and so on with school? Okay, so unfortunately, because of where we are and what we have, we don't race that frequently. So it's probably every other weekend, so twice a month that we'd have horse racing. Um, but a lot of my friends are, were made through horse racing. So I go to school with them and it's, we go to school and we would have the in-between conversations like with my family. Um, but when it came time for horse racing, I was, you know, gun ho to that, really focused on that. So it just came with a little bit of discipline where, you know, you have your studies, you have your homework that you have to complete, but then you also want to 
can uh, give out a proper product for horse racing. And this is at the time when I was talking about when I was in commentary. And you want to put out a proper product, so you have to be disciplined and studying with that as well. So just a bunch of time management because I also play volleyball. So it was also managing a sport. Um, so it was just being disciplined, knowing what I want in life and knowing what I want to be good at and putting in the work to get those results out. All right, beautiful. Rashawn is going to stay here with us. Again, if you miss it, he's a part of our commentary team for Saturday's Gold Cup presentation. Uh, he's also our featured exceptional youth for today. When we come back, we're going to talk about what he's doing right now. He's not based in Barbados, so he's here just for this action. That's all coming up next. Stay with us. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning Barbados is on the move and we're coming to you every weekday morning from right here at the Standard Showroom in Wildy. Now, together, we're giving you an opportunity to win. All you have to do is submit a photo of that room that you want to see changed in a fantastic way. And the interior design curator here at Standard and all of their experts are going to get together and select the room that needs the most work. It just might be yours. All you have to do is submit your photo to info at standard.bb and you could be here with us saying, Morning Barbados, look at my beautiful space. Coming soon to this station, live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd. BSAC, sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United. As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win and which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you indeed. As the sun comes up here in Wildy, we welcome you to the Standard Showroom for today's Morning Barbados presentation. And our exceptional youth today is Rashawn Aline, still spending a little time with us. Now, he is one of the youngest commentators for horse racing originating here on the island so we are more than pleased to have him with us today now you migrated um around 2021 uh you went outside of the island uh you're Kamamir alum so you know some people will be happy to see that you'll be next to Amory. Yeah, it's up and on <laughs> together, yes. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to be with Amory on camera. You know, a lot of people are going to be watching and supporting uh, when they heard that the opportunity came up. They're very excited for me, and I am equally as excited. And uh, speaking of horse racing through the years, Amory has been a staple in our as a part of our commentary team as well so here you are you grew up watching her mm -hmm. um, you know taking on the horse racing from that end and sharing with the rest of Barbados and now you'll be sharing that awesome stage with her but I want to talk about volleyball because you also play volleyball uh, yes so I do play volleyball um, when I was here I played for my school common Mayor, and then I my final club here was for Foundation School. Uh, so Foundation United is the name of the adult club. Uh, then when I moved, I got into coaching. So I coach uh, teenage girl club volleyball in the U.S. and currently coaching a 16s team. So we have a bunch of tournaments all over the U.S. And I'm not as active as I was, but I do continue to play. That's where I was yesterday, you know, just going and visiting the old club and playing there. But now I'm a coach and I do coaching in the U.S. Well, it's so interesting because you're in the process of doing uh, your master's degree in a very interesting field. So reveal that to us and then tell us how you got there. Okay, so the degree.
degree that I'm doing is a master's in speech and language pathology. And earlier, as I said, I wanted to be in horse racing in some way. So I was linked. And I wanted to be a jockey, couldn't do that physically, wanted to be a vet. And that's the degree I went down. And I was like, okay, maybe this is not for me. I love the animals, but maybe this path is not for me. And as I got into announcing and public speaking and you know, eloquence and elocution and just words and learning and extent, expanding my vocab, I just became, you know, in, into the English language. So I went to, I changed my degree and I got into literature in English and linguistics. And that's a, linguistics was what I fell in love with. And that's like a white umbrella. So specifying, um, like narrowing it down, speech and language pathology I thought was well, helping people with speech disorders and communication disorders. And you can use, you can work with kids or adults. And I think through coaching and like all the experiences I've had with impact in my younger life, I think I, I wanted to go down a path of working with children. So speech and language pathology was a great opportunity to one, bring my love of the degree of linguistics together with my uh, affinity for working with younger kids. And that's where I am. I'm now doing my master's back where I live in the U.S. All right, that's truly beautiful. Now, as we look toward the Gold Cup, have you been keeping track? No pun intended. <laughs> it was right there. It was right of what's there. happening. Yeah. Uh, yes, I have been. And that's the big reason why I came home for this, because I am going to be out as quickly as I got here. Um, this year is setting up to be one of the best uh, international fields to ever be, you know, lining up. And... I've been very close to a barn when I was here, and they're imp they've imported horses to the race, and they're import they've imported some very good horses. So I've been tracking and seeing, you know, all the competition for the Gold Cup specifically uh, for the last two months, and really being interested in what was going to happen here. And then just the surrounding races have been just as competitive, and so it's piqued my interest even more to be here. And it's going to be it was just setting up to be a pretty normal day, but it was going to be a pretty as a race fan, it was going to be an amazing day as with the competition of the horses. But now being, you know, with Amory in the commenter on the commentary team, it's going to be it's piqued my interest even more. All right. So my very first time producing Gold Cup was in 2018, and so I I got into Gold Cup in a way that I had never known existed before. Right. So all of a sudden, I was at the Garrison Savannah at six o'clock in the morning. And there were throngs of people um, just out to watch the horses exercising. Uh, and then on the Friday before Gold Cup, which is tomorrow, yep. then the jockeys do like foot races and all of that. So take us behind the scenes as to what it's like preparing. Because you, you happened upon our team earlier this week as well. Yes. You were at the garrison bright and early to watch <laughs> them too. So, yeah, as soon as I got here, like late early very early in the morning it was like 2 a.m i was up at the garrison for uh, eight because that's when the around the time of the import is going out there in quarantine so they can't go out with our local horses so i got there and i saw Anne marie i said hi to her um not knowing what was to come but it was it's just something where you you want to be a part of because the race is, you know, billed as the most prestigious race in the Eastern Caribbean, and that feel is not just on Saturday. That is in all the lead up, and you just want to be a part, seeing the preparation, talking to people, because that's the good thing about horse racing, and I am sure other sports, but horse racing for me in particular, where there's so many different opinions, but it's such a mel melting pot of those opinions, where you may like one horse and your buddy may like someone else, but you come together to see everything, you know, to chat and to just, you know, socialize at the garrison while you're witnessing these in my opinion, magnificent animals go in front of you. And I think it's a very, it's a big privilege to be able to witness. Also, after moving to the U.S. and seeing the different tracks, it's also a privilege to witness so up close where you could, I hope you don't, but you can reach out and touch these horses. They're that close to you. And I think it's a great experience to be immersed in. And yeah, I, as soon as I got here, I was like, I am going to the garrison. Yeah. <laughs> I may leave here and go to the garrison. Who knows? <laughs> you, you truly love it. Yes. And I love that, you know, that you're so into it. Uh, while you are in the U.S., are you able to take in any of the horse racing? Because I know it happens far more frequently as long as you get close to a track or what have you. So, unfortunately, I live seven hours away from my closest track. Wow. I can get to and from the garrison a million times in seven hours in Barbados. So, yes, it's more frequent, but it's more inaccessible. So, there's no, there's no, it would have to be a trip for me as well. Like, coming here, it would have to be a trip to a trip to a track. When I lived on the east coast of the U.S., I was able to go more frequently, but now that I'm on the west coast, I'm a bit farther from a 
a track. So unfortunately, there's no going to the racetrack, but that does not, you no, know, that is definitely my love for horse racing. There are a lot of different avenues to be able to watch frequently, and I explore those. So I watch horse racing from all across the US, and I'm still very in tune to what is happening here. Um, I still have a good relationship with the commentators, and a lot of my friends are still, you know, as I said, big into horse racing. So we talk frequently about what is happening, whether local or international. All right, we certainly look forward to having you, uh, you know, come and take the race, work with us. Um, over the weekend for the Gold Cup. But I, I must ask you, are you one of these commentators who kind of starts and then you build and build <laughs> and by the end, it's like all over the place. It's so exciting. Here comes this one. No, it's that one. For sure, yes? Yes. So I, that's what I, I, can, I can go to that narrative. I can succumb <laughs> to that narrative. Sure. That's good stuff. You've received great training. Uh, we are happy to... Uh, feature you as today's ex exceptional youth because of the wonderful work that you've done and the fact that you've been able to kind of live your dream. How many young people out there are looking on and saying, hey, I love something and you just went for it. You, yep. you made a call to the turf club and you said, can I have a chance at, as a teenager? And they said, yes, straight off the cuff. So, you know, kudos to the turf club on that as well, yes. because uh, we love to hear stories like these one. So something tells me that you are heading in the direction of the garrison when you leave here. <laughs> I'm very close. When you talk so. about horses, your eyes just light up. Yeah. Uh, it's, first, I, I'm very appreciative of the opportunity that the Turf Club gave me. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So the worst thing they could have said is no, and it, you know, you go again. But yes, when it comes to horse racing, I bleed horse racing, and it's something that they call it the sport of kings, but it's a sport for everyone. Like, you can rise to stardom from anywhere, just a little boy from St. James, and I was able to get into commentary at a very high level here. So I think it's such a great sport, such a great opportunity, no matter what you know, sector you want to get in in the sport. It is, it's a great opportunity. It's a great sport, and I love it so much. All right, so this is Rashawn Ali, and you can look out for him on Saturday as a part of the CBC commentary team for the Sandy Lane Gold Cup 2024, uh, we most certainly will be bringing you all the action, the pomp and ceremony, which is as important to Barbadians as the horse races themselves. Uh, but of course, nothing says that you can't be there at the Garrison Savannah. So if you're there, you know, we look forward to seeing you as well. Hey, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we have lots to tell you about art. Stay with us. As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win and which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. Morning, morning, morning. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. There are some things that make mornings even better. And one of those things is Morning Barbados. You'll step into your day informed, inspired, and entertained. Tune in to CBC TV 8, Monday to Friday from 6.30 to 8 a.m. for Morning Barbados. Your morning must have. Every day at 7 p.m., we bring you a comprehensive news package because keeping you informed is our number one priority. Whether it's local, regional, or international stories, our commitment is to you and keeping you reliably informed. Join us every day at 7 p.m. for CBC News Night. Hi, good day. I'm 
Auntie Diane to some of the children in my life. But I'm also Dr. Diane Brathwick from the Barbados Diabetes Foundation. So it has been shown that consumption of sugar in excessive amounts contributes to diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, acne, concentration problems, putting on excess weight, and I could go on and on. Do you know that some of your favorite juices, soft drinks, flavored waters contain as much as 6, 10, 12, 17 teaspoons of sugar? 17. 17? I bet you didn't know that one teaspoon of sugar is equal to 4 grams of carbohydrates. So when you drink a drink that contains 53 grams of sugar, do the math. How many teaspoons of sugar are you drinking? Give me water instead. Rethink your drink. I'm Anne St. John, a consultant pediatrician. When packing healthy lunch boxes, do include a fruit, which includes a banana, apple, orange, or grapes to supply fiber. Aim for low calorie packaged snacks without the mention of flour or sugar amongst the four, four ingredients on the back label. One in three children in Barbados is affected by overweight or obesity. Let us join together as parents and care providers to reduce the further development of this chronic non-communicable disease within our communities. Hello today, my name is Dr. Diane Rafford. I'm the clinical director at the Barbara Diabetes Foundation and also the lead consultant at the Diabetes Clinic. My tip for the week is plan it. And what do I mean by plan it? If you think about it realistically, we all live very, very busy lives. And if you take the time to plan your meals and nutrition over the coming week, you'll find that you'll actually eat healthier meals, spend less money, and they'll probably actually taste a lot better. So what exactly do I mean by plan it? Where are you going to go? What are you going to buy? Where are you going to shop? What about your budget? When are you going to cook food? Maybe when are you going to prepare snacks for maybe the kids in the week? Say this can't look, for example. There's so many things that I can do with this. I could actually use this to make an unsweetened natural juice. Maybe hit it with a twist of lime. I can also cut it up and just eat it as fresh fruit. Maybe I can actually make a smoothie with it, with yogurt. You know what else I love to put cantaloupe in? Salad. Or how about using it as a chutney, a pickle, add it to meat. There's just so much stuff that you can do with just the simple things that you can buy. So remember, the health of our children matters. What you put in is what you get out. So plan your best life today. Morning Barbados is on the move and we're coming to you every weekday morning from right here at the Standard Showroom in Wilby. Now, together, we're giving you an opportunity to win. All you have to do is submit a photo of that room that you want to see changed in a fantastic way. And the interior design curator here at Standard and all of their experts are going to get together and select the room that needs the most work. It just might be yours. All you have to do is submit your photo to info at standard.bb and you could be here with us saying, Morning Barbados, look at my beautiful space. Coming soon to this station, live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd. BSAC, sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. All right, welcome back. Beautiful, sunshiny day. The sun is peeking out. We had some uh, light showers earlier this morning, but that's fine. We're happy with that. 
we are most certainly uh, talking a lot about horse racing today. And you know why it's the lead up to uh, the most prestigious horse race in Barbados. And we most certainly look forward to it. I have an invitation here. Let me tell you what it says. Inviting all horse and art lovers to the Barbados Turf Club Barbados Gold Cup. Uh, presenting Huff Beats Again 2024, an art exhibition by Frank Levine Jr., living in New York, exhibits internationally at the Winfield Cumberbatch Garden Art Gallery, Garden, Western St. James, and uh, it started on Sunday, the 25th of February. And guess what? We have some people here with us. So starting with Harrietta Cumberbatch Bovell, who is an artist and she's curator at the Winfield Cumberbatch, Winifred rather, Cumberbatch Garden Art Gallery. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, thank you. And also here is Mr. Frank Levine Jr. as well, an artist and photographer. Good to have you with us. Good morning. All right, so talk to me about the pieces, the beautiful pieces that we're looking at this morning. Uh, certainly is an interesting exhibit, and you would have heard our very first interview okay. with Rashawn. So it feels to me as though you are one of these people who, who has had a deep and very long love for horses as well. That's correct. <laughs> Tell me all about it. Well, um, good morning, Barbados. Good morning, T. Morning. Okay. That started many, many years ago from being a teenager. With the, as always, the aspiration of being a jockey. You want to be a jockey too? I grew too, <laughs> too, too heavy, you know. But um, it's, that's what introduced me to horses, from being working around them. But that was one of the dreams that I had. I wanted to be the next Charlie Jones, Venice Richards. That was every little boy's dream, until you get around horses. I mean, you're at 18 and very, very tiny. That's fun, you know. But um, art is another thing. I think I usually mention sometimes I was, I think I was born an artist. So but early in those days when you thought you were it, going to be like Charlie Jones and so well, on, uh, did you recognize that you had a knack yeah, I was, for, uh, for painting as well? I've been painting, I've been drawing from as far as I can remember. I've been drawing. I drew everything. Up to my early school years, like in secondary school, everything was drawn. And it wasn't using a camera yet, so I had to draw what I see and try to get as much detail to make it as realistic as possible. All right. When did horses oh. creep into your work? Um, with art. That came about around the same time I was working with horses. I started... Um, I was painting anything. I was I was a Bayesian artist uh, when I was growing up, growing up here as a young guy. I painted the, the landscapes, the people, the boat scenes, all that stuff. But then um, around like late, late 70s, I noticed, I started admiring work. People actually didn't know what it was called at the time, but people actually painted horses. And I noticed some great artists from England. And I said, okay, i like to do that. But I never really gave it that much thought. But I think, one time I got to secondary school, I met Miss Bavel, my former teacher, best friend, everything. Okay. All right, I can reconcile that for a minute. Yes. This lady here was your teacher at school? Yes, yes, that's my teacher, my best friend. Um, okay, yes. and his mother, and his mother, mom, I know was everything. his teacher at Parkinson's. <laughs> yes. I have... I call him my oldest son okay. of the lot. I have a lot of sons that people find hard to believe are my sons. Yeah. He's the first. And they have children who have grown along with me. I mentor them. I work with them. And okay, let's talk about how, how you, how you kind of help to uh, grow this, this love for art. Because I know art teachers can bring that out in you or they can Stifling. Um, no, I am not the stifler. I was one of those art teachers who I worked throughout the lunch hour, any evening, any after, any time, vacation. I've even worked a Christmas day with <laughs> students, with doing something for students. I work with students. I try to encourage them to grow them. I used to tell him he's going to be too tall to be a jockey. Never listen. I, he doesn't so, believe 
give you? No. He thought he was going to stay short? He, he wanted me. to stay he, short? He wanted to stay small and short. I said, you're going to get too tall. Come and work on the art. Give it some more. Do the horses in the art. And we can see the results today. All right. Now, Mrs. Cumberbatch Bavel, um, I think it's important for us to reflect on the level of support that maybe you had as a teacher in that generation because I seem to think or remember or as the stories are told people always look art just like you told him boy you are going to be too tall to be a jockey you're going to outgrow this a lot of people usually said when it came to art you have to find a backup for it yeah we were told that I yeah. was told that otherwise I probably would have been a full-fledged artist but we were told, get the backup, so we got the backup. Me too. But I had some <laughs> wonderful art teacher, Joyce Donald being one of them, and she is my mentor. What she gave to me, I gave to students, and that's where it started. But he is going to be showing at the, he is showing now at the Winifred Kamabach Gallery, and that in itself is a story, the Winifred Kamabach Gallery. My sister, I'm one of a twin. I was one of a twin. My sister passed away 33 years ago wow. to, to this month, 20, the 20th of February. And we have opened this new gallery in St. James. I built this new gallery in St. James on the West Coast to highlight her, her work, and to play tribute to her. And She was an artist as well? She was also an artist. She, was, she died at age 35. She was a very involved person, if I may show you her picture. Absolutely. I think... People from her, from that era would remember the Kamabach twins. We were known as the Kamabach twins, and it is the gallery that we are showing. And she was kind of popular in, I think, 1989 when there was a young women's, a young women's business competition. She was one of the 17 persons who took part in that competition. Marlon Rice Bourne won that competition, but... She, I'd say that to say the kind of projection she had as a young person at that time. So the gallery has been open to pay tribute to her. Oh, that's beautiful. And this to is, this send is what a you, legacy. This is what you call coming full circle. So here you have one of your students showing in this yes, newly, yes. one of your former students showing in this newly built studio yes. that you built in honor of your yes. late sister. And if I can add, is not just one of my students, Frank Naveen. He's the first, and I have the last, Keyshawn Abrams, who is a young artist. He was on CBC on Morning Barbados a few months back, also showing his work. He, too, is one of the artists showing in this show and working with me as a resident artist. And my brother is an artist also, Tony Kamabach. So it's a whole group of us, and my nephew, Kenny Craig. So it's a whole group of us as a family. It's a family thing that are shown at the gallery in the gardens in James. Oh, that's truly beautiful. All right, I want to talk a little bit about these wow. pieces. Um, uh, do these pieces represent your work over years? Uh, were they specifically created? Or are these, you know, pieces that come to mind? No, no. They're, they're from, this is one of my early pieces from, I think, 20... 2022? No. No, 99? 99, yes. 99, 99. This is one of my early pieces. And no, but you have to tell us about um, it. I mean, this is so this, incredibly <laughs> This one, This one is called Call to Post. Call it's to Post. It. Yeah, yeah um, just, like, you know, you're just waiting for your number to be called to be next in line to go in the gates. This one is called Call to Post. It's an acrylic on canvas. And to me, when I see that, that represents racing in Barbados. But just looking at it, you know that's that's home, Barbara's Absolutely. my home. Absolutely, your home. I'm abroad, but this is my home. All and right, talk to the me next about this one, next one. This is um, one of the top American horses. It was a horse of the year a few years ago. But I I love this painting because it, it really I try to illustrate ways that I can do like commissions, and I fell in love with this painting because it looks so real. I think that's a good selling. You know, people are interested in my art if they want a horse done. So you always push this one. There, I love that one. Um, um, this is a recent one, 19, oh, I think a few years after this one. 
Let's borrow this again. I include the, the original one was sold a few years ago and I replaced it. I include some landmarks at the clock tower just to make it and to give the feeling it's moving, turning for home. This is fun. And this is one of my recent ones, the watercolor paper. That was done last year while well, it was here. That um, that's watercolor. Like, that definitely looks watercolor like watercolor on, on a full sheet watercolor painting. And, and that's, I was encouraged to do watercolors by her again. Everything you see here is because of her. And God, the, as I always said, I have to give credit to people that was involved with me. I didn't get one more decided to do this. I had a lot of help. I had some, um, in secondary school, I, I was a past student at Parkinson Secondary School. Just across, this is my old neighborhood. And um, I had, at one point in time, in my third, you said third form, I had a teacher called um, Grantley Prescott. Prescott. He, as I knew later, he was the designer of the Barbados flag. And I only know that a few years after, when I put the interest in that, it, I had some good people around me. Well, he passed you know, a few years back. There's another one called Basil Jones, a former artist and photographer, who I always go to to critique my work. If I wasn't sure about something, Basil will let me know what the problem is. So that's how I learned. It's a lot of hard work. And this lady behind me, driving me and driving me, this is the result, okay? When she talks, she says something. For all these years, I still listen. I can tell. And this is the reason. I have a lot of That's respect. Important. I have a lot of respect for her. And what it reinforces is the place that teachers have yes. yeah. in, in bringing children along. Yeah, I think teachers play a big role, so big, that, and so few people recognize it. But this, there's a lot of talent in Barbados, and it needs to be nurtured, and it needs to be encouraged. And one of the reasons for the gallery, again, is to have this residency situation where you can nurture people and help correct them and really encourage a student to move from where they think they can go to show them international possibilities. And that's what I'm about, the international possibilities and the things that can follow. All right, that's truly beautiful. Hey, we're going to come back and then we get to talk about your art a little bit as well as we tell you how you can come out and experience all of these exhibit on show for this presentation just in time for gold cup stay with us morning 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 good morning good morning to you As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win and which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. Welcome back to Morning Barbados. And today it feels like Gold Cup Day. <laughs> we really should be. We really should be at the garrison. I don't know if only we weren't at standard. We, we love to be here in this beautiful showroom. Don't just take our word for it. I know you get a chance to see some of these beautiful furnishings and pieces and so on. But if you want to see it in its fullness, you have to come on down. They get open around 9 o'clock in the morning. And the staff, some of them are already here and ready to serve you. So a special good morning to the Standard 
uh, team who are very, very welcoming uh, for anybody who comes in with their questions. I'm very knowledgeable too. That's important. Today we are sharing with Frank, uh, some of his work. Frank Lorene Jr. is an artist and photographer. And Harrietta Cumberbatch Bovell is the curator of the Winifred Cumberbatch Garden Art Gallery. Um, you know, it's a gallery that she built in honor of her late sister. And Frank is her first student, and now he's showing at the gallery. That must mean a great deal for you. For me, this is a full circle moment. Yeah, this means a lot because I can see how far it came. As I said, with her encouragement, she, she saw something in me many, many years ago. I never knew I could paint this well. I never knew. Because when I, when I assumed that I did enough, I'm not accepting that I can do better. Yeah. I've been here now for a very, very long time. So it's instilled in me that oh, I can do this. All right, good stuff. Then you got into photography, you said. Yeah, um, when I, I was here, I spent my, my earlier years here. From, I was here for like 21 years. I grew up in Barbados. But I returned to England in 1984. Um, I was here for the first Gold Cup. I don't want to mention that. That's how long, 1982 until 1984. That was the last one that I actually saw until I returned here. And I returned to England and I said pursue you know, some interest in art. And I wish I did. And I got involved in photography at college. So I majored in photography. I did some graphic design. Everything doing the art. So I had to rely on all this drawing like before. I have a camera now. So I photographed the racing. I also got involved in um, natural history. That's another thing that I'm very fond of. I love my birds, nature. So I do um, natural history photography, my racing. And as I said, the Caribbean art that I grew up doing, I still do that on commission base if I have to. You never forget home. I can just imagine placing in Barbados from memory and I can actually paint it. Okay, beautiful stuff. Uh, Mrs. Cumberbatch Bavel, talk to me about this particular exhibit, how people can come to see it and uh, what they can expect. Uh, I would imagine there are quite a few other pieces yes. that they can look forward to seeing too. Okay, the show has 38 pieces from Frank. It has about 24 from Keyshawn, the two ends of the spectrum, sons. And then it has my nephew's work. He has about 20 pieces. My brother has six pieces. My sister, I'm only showing six pieces of her work since it's her gallery. And for me, I'm only showing two pieces of sculpture because I do sculpture also. So I'm showing two ceramic sculpture pieces in honor of her game. And that's basically the word. To come to the gallery, we are on the West Coast. You pass Lone Star area, you go past Pump and Mechanics, and we are like seven house spots after Pump and Mechanics. It's a new gallery, a beautiful building I designed. My brother built the artist, my brother the artist built the gallery. And it's a it's a three-story building with mm, a wrapped around pile veranda and the sign is there the Rennie Fred Cumberbatch Garden Art Gallery so you shouldn't miss it on your way down on the west coast I'm always on the coast mm -hmm. I'm always in that Can't area so I most certainly will be looking up for it yeah it's a white building it's very beautiful very beautiful yeah what what does it mean to you to be able to I mean showcase <laughs> these pieces as well you said there are 38 pieces yeah. are all of them because if we go with the name of the exhibit uh, I wasn't even sure I was calling it right. Hoof beats again, H or hoof hoof beats hoof again. Hoof, 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 hoof beats, beats like again, 2024. Yes. All right. So what's the name? The name. This is the name that he had for his first the exhibition. First one, yeah. The first one was held at the Barbados Museum, 25 years ago, and it was opened by Grant Lee Prescott. Grant Lee Prescott was still alive, and that was hoof beats. So. We did the second one in 2012. Now, 20, now coming, running into 25 years. This is the 25th year. We're doing hoof beats. So 
who beats again <laughs> for 24 <laughs> that's and did. that's the name but because the gallery is a new gallery opening and it is in honor of my sister we have some of her work and the other artists my brother his work is there sure. we did not we originally the intention was to have my work in the show a vast amount and my brother's work but we were the builders and we didn't get time to do anything else other than focus on getting that building prepared and everything that went with it like i said it's three levels it's the workshop the art gallery and then the upstairs is the residencies for artists and at this point we're using one of the residency spaces to showcase Keyshawn work, the, the residency that he originally stayed at. So it was a lot of work getting it together, but they've got the artists there. My nephew Kenny from Scarface Tattoos. My nephew also does tattoos. So he does a lot of things, tattoos, glass work, painting, a wide range of arts and crafts. That's his life. Oh, that's so. beautiful. I want to thank both of you for sharing with us. And I can see how pleased you are to be yeah. able to uh, build wow. and dedicate a space, uh, doing what you love and bringing in the people whom you've been able to work with throughout Thank the you. years to share in that joy. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. Thank you. Uh, if the invitation is open to us, we most certainly would like to come through with some cameras to I've, see I've been yes. a bit in its fullness as well. Yes. So thank you once again for sharing with us Frank Levine Jr. and Harrietta Cumberbatch Bavel. She was his teacher. <laughs> the only I didn't show my twin sister. Yes. And uh, the gallery is in honor of her late twin sister. Hey, we're going to take another break here. And uh, come on back on Morning Barbados. Do stay tuned. Morning, morning, morning. Every day at 7 p.m., we bring you a comprehensive news package because keeping you informed is our number one priority. Whether it's local, regional, or international stories, our commitment is to you and keeping you reliably informed. Join us every day at 7 p.m. for CBC Newsnight. I'm Anne St. John, a consultant paediatrician. When packing healthy lunch boxes, do include a fruit, which includes a banana, apple, orange, or grapes to supply fiber. Aim for low calorie packaged snacks without the mention of flour or sugar amongst the four, four ingredients on the back label. One in three children in Barbados is affected by overweight, or obesity. Let us join together as parents and care providers to reduce the... Morning Barbados is on the move and we're coming to you every weekday morning from right here at the Standard Showroom in Wildy. Now together we're giving you an opportunity to win. All you have to do is submit a photo of that room that you want to see changed in a fantastic way and the interior design curator here at Standard and all of their experts are going to get together and select the room that needs the most work. It just might be yours. All you have to do is submit your photo to info at standard.bb and you could be here with us saying, Morning Barbados, look at my beautiful space. Coming soon to this station, live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd. BSAC, sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning to you. I'm Tisha Hines. It's time now for an update of the news. While the payment of NIS contributions have been made easier 
convenient for individuals, the registration process for those subscribing to the service remains challenging. That concern from MP for Christchurch West Central, Adrian Ford, who was at the time contributing to the estimates discussion on the Ministry of Labor, Social Security and the Third Sector. Labor Minister Colin Jordan, however, detailed plans to broaden the outreach of the National Insurance and Social Security Service in the coming financial year. It is our intention to have persons in the field going to speak, to encourage, and to assist with their registration as self-employed persons for the purpose of national insurance. So there is in train, and I believe early in the new financial year, that will be actually put into effect, where we have those persons who go out into communities, into centers of small business, into places where there are self-employed persons to educate in a more direct way. Now, Minister Jordan has also urged workers to ensure that their NIS contributions are being paid in by employers. Persons who are employed, we encourage you to go on the portal or to have a relative or confidant of yours do it on your behalf. Go on the portal so that the fact that an employer has not paid in your contributions after deducting them does not shock you at the point of pensionable age. So we are going to do our best from the inspections perspective. We also want workers to participate in that, let me call it policing exercise. The Ministry of Transport's Mill and Pave program is moving across the country, and Barbadians are happy with the development. Crystal Hoyt has more. Residents in Kensington New Road, St. Michael, are pleased that road works have begun in their community. The community as, as a whole is very, very happy of the roads that's being done. It's been long overdue. We're very thankful for the government and also to the contractor. How long is I live here almost 40 years and never do before. So it's now doing now. It's still very happy. While they're thankful for the road works, they hope the gutters can be cleared as well to address the issue of mosquitoes. And the gutters are overflown, full of mosquitoes. The people in our community is being, is being, getting sick. You know, dengue is on the increase. As it relates to a timeline, charge hand foreman Anthony Mears admitted there has been some delays. Well, we are milling the road to get it paved for Friday, but the progress was smooth yesterday until the two bird spikes that I meet. While the work was working on them from yesterday morning, it came back today, not too long finished. So I know God sent for material to backfill those holes. Once they get their sort of to that area and start to water, let's get this one dealt with and that one dealt with. He's optimistic the work can be completed by early next week. Crystal Hoyt, CBC News. Well, thank you, Crystal. 28-year-old Barbadian who was attacked and stabbed in Britain recently is now out of his coma. The Bajan, who was on holiday, is now showing signs of movement, according to his mother, Yvette Thompson, who spoke with CBC from London. He is out of the coma. He's awake. He's drowsy, obviously. He's drowsy. He still has the breathing tube in his nose to help him breathe. But he has a lot of movement on his right hand and his right foot. His left hand this morning, he was able to place it on his chest but the left side of his body is going to take some time to heal. But he's coming around and I want to say thank you for all the continued praise and support. Barbados top local surfer Chelsea Tuak has crashed out of the main round of the Women's Championship at the World Surf Games in La Marginal, Puerto Rico. 
Tuak, who sat in second up until the dying stages yesterday, ended third in her heat with a score of 8.67 behind winner Sally Fitzgibbons of Australia, who scored an 11.67. Tuak now goes into rep repercharge four. She joins Chelsea Rowett, who was second in her repercharge round three heat with a wave total of 9.37. On the men's side, the Burke brothers, Josh and Jacob, are both into their fourth session after second place's finishes in their respective heats. And that is our update of morning news. Remember, you can join us later this afternoon for Newsday at 12 noon here on TV8. Or you can tune into our radio services on 100.7 FM, 94.7 FM, and 98.1 The One for The World at One. Coming up here on Morning Barbados, a few of my favorite picks from here in the Standard Showroom. So stick around for that. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win and which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. There are some things that make mornings even better. And one of those things is Morning Barbados. You'll step into your day informed, inspired, and entertained. Tune in to CBC TV 8, Monday to Friday from 6.30 to 8 a.m. for Morning Barbados. Your morning must have. Every day at 7 p.m., we bring you a comprehensive news package because keeping you informed is our number one priority. Whether it's local, regional, or international stories, our commitment is to you and keeping you reliably informed. Join us every day at 7 p.m. for CBC Newsnight. I'm Anne St. John, a consultant pediatrician. When packing healthy lunch boxes, do include a fruit, which includes a banana, apple, orange, or grapes to supply fiber. Aim for low calorie packaged snacks without the mention of flour or sugar amongst the four, four ingredients on the bat label. One in three children in Barbados is affected by overweight, or obesity. Let us join together as parents and care providers to reduce the further development of this chronic non-communicable disease within our communities. Morning Barbados is on the move and we're coming to you every weekday morning from right here at the Standard Showroom in Wildey. Now, together, we're giving you an opportunity to win. All you have to do is submit a photo of that room that you want to see changed in a fantastic way. And the interior design curator here at Standard and all of their experts are gonna get together and select the room that needs the most work. It just might be yours. All you have to do is submit your photo to info at standard.bb and you could be here with us saying morning Barbados look at my beautiful space 
coming soon to this station. Live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd. BSAC, sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United. As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win and which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. There are some things that make mornings even better. And one of those things is Morning Barbados. You'll step into your day informed, inspired, and entertained. Tune in to CBC TV 8, Monday to Friday from 6.30 to 8 a.m. for Morning Barbados. Your morning must have. Every day at 7 p.m., we bring you a comprehensive news package because keeping you informed is our number one priority. Whether it's local, regional, or international stories, our commitment is to you and keeping you reliably informed. Join us every day at 7 p.m. for CBC News Night. I'm Anne St. John, a consultant pediatrician. When packing healthy lunch boxes, do include a fruit, which includes a banana, apple, orange, or grapes to supply fiber. Aim for low calorie packaged snacks without the mention of flour or sugar amongst the four, four ingredients on the back label. One in three children in Barbados is affected by overweight, or obesity. Let us join together as parents and care providers to reduce the further development of this chronic non-communicable disease within our communities. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. All right, so welcome back to Morning Barbados. You know, with Life TV, we're behind the scenes doing all types of things, right? <laughs> Not supposed to tell you that, but it's absolutely true. All right, so I wanted to present uh, a few of my favorite things that I absolutely love here at Standard. I mean, we are here with so many beautiful pieces, and we're really excited about this partnership with Standard. We want to make sure that you come out and get everything you need. Today is, of course, the final day of February as well. Uh, all this month, we've been celebrating Black History Month. You saw the lady before, she had her beautiful African dress on. So I know a lot of people will be coming out in your prints today. We are also celebrating all of the people who are leapers. We can call you that for today. Uh, who have your birthday in a leap year, the 29th of February. Yes, happy birthday to you. Uh, a young man who went to school with my daughter, Maurice. Happy birthday to you, Maurice, and happy birthday to Maurice's, uh, to Mar happy birthday to Maurice, and good morning to Maurice's mom, Marsha, as well, and uh, happy birthday to anybody who is celebrating today. So these are diffusers. This one is, is called Cedarwood's Discovery of Natural Fragrance, and this is what it looks like. So uh, trust me when I tell you it lights up a room. Uh, you just open it and all of this beautiful stuff is available. So I'm going to show you all of them and then you can guess or I'm going to show you what my favorite ones are. But this one is our producer Nadia's favorite, Cedar Woods. And uh, it's a really, really great smell. I must tell you, it really was a tough choice for me to decide. But these are 
are really beautiful for lighting up a room, making it smell, and they have a nice little zhuzh as well, a nice pina, uh, pizzazz about them uh, to put on your side tables or your center tables. When we have the curator from here at Standard with us, she talked about putting these on the dinner table as well. I can see that absolutely working. Now, this one is actually a candle. Look at how gorgeous it is. Look at that. It's actually a candle, but that's, that's beautiful. And uh, these are the pieces that you would have been seeing on, on the set. So the other table we had here, we actually had this piece, the candle, and you never would guess that, right? So it, this is a candle. And then, of course, we had this, and it looked like a little centerpiece, but this is actually a diffuser as well. So there you have it. It looks like you have a little centerpiece, but it's actually, uh, you have the scent in there to share. So this is gorgeous. I love this one too. And they come nicely boxed. What I love about how they come boxed is that you can absolutely give it as a gift. So that's very, very beautiful. And then get into this one. This is the boxing for this particular diffuser. So if you see this one, for example, on a table, I don't think that you would ever think that this is a diffuser. It comes with, uh, where do they go? Right, so you have these to put in there, and of course, you have your nice scent, and that's it. And this makes a really beautiful table piece, not to mention how I love the packaging. I think it makes a beautiful gift for whatever occasions there are coming up. Get into that. Isn't that just beautiful? And these are all under $60, all of them. Some of them weigh less than that. Yeah, but definitely beautifully packaged pieces and uh, would make gorgeous gifts, so you should check them out. So which one is my favorite of all the diffusers? Ah, uh, I don't know. It was really a toss up. I enjoy these ones. Uh, this one smells really good. This one is a nice piece, so it looks good, but this one is definitely my absolute favorite. So next time you visit me, you know, rest assured that you are going to see this on one of my tables, looking and smelling really elegant. And who would think just small accents like these help to make your room so much brighter. So just beautiful stuff. So make sure you come on down and check it out. Remember, they're open from 9 o'clock this morning. I know that usually when we wrap up, a lot of people come through because they're not sure. I, I guess because you think we're here, you think they're open just after the show closes. But they open at 9 o'clock this morning. So come on down and check everything they have to offer. And remember, you can win and win big with Standard and Morning Barbados. All you have to do is take a picture of a room that you would like to have revamped. You've been seeing uh, the trailer playing all morning. Send it to us uh, via the email info at standard.bb and you could be in with a chance to come in with their curator, their in-house curator for free for consultation on how you can make that room look and maybe even smell a whole lot better. And there are quite a few options here at standard for you to choose from. So when we come back, I'm going to move around again. I have a few more of my favorite things to share with you on this gorgeous Thursday morning, the final day of February. Do stay with us. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you.
Morning Barbados is on the move and we're coming to you every weekday morning from right here at the Standard Showroom in Wildey. Now, together, we're giving you an opportunity to win. All you have to do is submit a photo of that room that you want to see changed in a fantastic Morning Barbados is on the move and we're coming to you every weekday morning from right here at the Standard Showroom in Wildey. Now, together, we're giving you an opportunity to win. All you have to do is submit a photo of that room that you want to see changed in a fantastic way. And the interior design curator here at Standard and all of their experts are going to get together and select the room that needs the most work. It just might be yours. All you have to do is submit your photo to info at standard.bb and you could be here with us saying, Morning Barbados, look at my beautiful space. Coming soon to this station, live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd. BSAC, sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United. As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win? And which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. There are some things that make mornings even better. And one of those things is Morning Barbados. You'll step into your day informed, inspired, and entertained. Tune in to CBC TV 8, Monday to Friday from 6.30 to 8 a.m. for Morning Barbados. Your morning must have. Every day at 7 p.m., we bring you a comprehensive news package because keeping you informed is our number one priority. Whether it's local, regional, or international stories, our commitment is to you and keeping you reliably informed. Join us every day at 7 p.m. for CBC Newsnight. Morning, morning, morning. Today is loads of fun. I get to move around the store here at Standard. Of course, get to peek out and see the traffic. Usually I'm backing it and you can see it behind me today. I'm kind of engaging face on. But uh, I'm sharing some of my top four picks. So sharing a lot of different things with you and telling you about the ones that I absolutely love. I've been trying to leave the credit cards in the car. Not working out. Right, Brown? <laughs> He's in the same boat that I am. Oh, wait. So is Joanna that, you know, those are some of the crew and uh, we're not going to leave the others out either. Uh, we're not just telling you that, but don't take our word for it. You definitely have to come in and see this stuff for yourself. Um, we have something amazing planned for you tomorrow. So make sure you're tuned in for that. You won't want to miss it. Uh, we have cooking going on. We're going to have also a mixologist coming through and we're going to have some good fun with that. But what gets me every time as I move through the store here at Standard are these gorgeous tablescapes. Aren't they just beautiful? I mean, look at how they're laid out. And everybody wants their home to look like this, yes? Um, pieces like this one really catch my attention because it's so beautiful, but it's also versatile. Look at this. So you can go the other way as well. I love stuff like that. So, I mean, when you switch it up, you don't have to worry about it looking the same because ironically, it's the same vase, but when you, when you flip it, it looks totally different, doesn't it? And then of course it comes in different sizes. So this is definitely a 
something that I like, but it's not in the favorite top four list. But these are, and you're looking at them even now. I'm talking about the cutlery. But look at how they're packaged. This is what kind of took it over the top for me. Look at this packaging on these, um, these polished cutlery pieces. Look at how it's packaged. Again, would make an amazing gift, wasn't it? So check it out. And this is the gold one. This one isn't even my favorite, if I'm honest. Uh, the gold is beautiful. But my number one pick, to see that, you're going to have to follow me. So let's go this way. And over to this side of the store to find my favorite pick. So here we go. And this one is actually my favorite pick so let's see if we can get it i'm moving a little too fast for the fellas you know how it is this one the rose gold one i think it is unique in so many ways so somebody special in my life is definitely going to be getting this as a gift this is another one of my favorite picks it also comes in the silver so you definitely have choices you might not be able to see it there so well in the plastic. So I'm just going to pick it up and show you. Look at that. Isn't that simply beautiful? The rose gold. And if you look at it on the table, I think I'm putting it in the wrong place. Anyways, if you look at it on the table, let me move this out. How uh, the curator here at Standard, how she's pulled it all together with this beautiful piece giving you some great ideas for your tablescapes as you plan. The next major thing on the calendar is Easter, of course. I know that there are usually a lot of tea parties. There are some people who love doing a lot of entertaining. We always have birthday parties coming up and just celebrations of life. So how about this? Gorgeous. And like I told you, the packaging is everything. It's simply gorgeous. You don't have to worry about anything. It looks exquisite. As we would say in Barbados, it looks expensive, <laughs> but it isn't. And this one comes in at a good price as well. So this is my second favorite thing. All right. So this is pick number two. I'm going to continue to move around. We're going to take a little break here. At some point in time, the retail sales manager is going to join me as we share some more very interesting picks from the standard showroom with you. And uh, I'm going to stick around this morning as well. So I look forward to seeing you when you come on through. Coming up next, my third pick for the morning from Tisha's top four picks of my favorite things. Stay with us. Morning, morning, morning. Coming soon to this station, live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd. BSAC, sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United. As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win? And which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. There are some things that make mornings even better. 
And one of those things is Morning Barbados. You'll step into your day informed, inspired, and entertained. Tune in to CBC TV 8, Monday to Friday from 6.30 to 8 a.m. for Morning Barbados. Your morning must have. Every day at 7 p.m., we bring you a comprehensive news package because keeping you informed is our number one priority. Whether it's local, regional, or international stories, our commitment is to you and keeping you reliably informed. Join us every day at 7 p.m. for CBC Newsnight. I'm Anne St. John, a consultant pediatrician. When packing healthy lunch boxes, do include a fruit, which includes a banana, apple, orange, or grapes to supply fiber. Aim for low calorie packaged snacks without the mention of flour or sugar amongst the four, four ingredients on the back label. One in three children in Barbados is affected by overweight, or obesity. Let us join together as parents and care providers to reduce the further development of this chronic non-communicable disease within our communities. Morning Barbados is on the move and we're coming to you every weekday morning from right here at the Standard Showroom in Wildey. Now, together, we're giving you an opportunity to win. All you have to do is submit a photo of that room that you want to see changed in a fantastic way. And the interior design curator here at Standard and all of their experts are going to get together and select the room that needs the most work. It just might be yours. All you have to do is submit your photo to info at standard.bb and you could be here with us saying, Morning Barbados, look at my beautiful space. Coming soon to this station, live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd. BSAC, sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United. As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win and which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. There are some things that make mornings even better. And one of those things is Morning Barbados. You'll step into your day informed, inspired, and entertained. Tune in to CBC TV 8, Monday to Friday from 6.30 to 8 a.m. For Morning Barbados, your morning must have. Morning, morning. All right, so the team challenged me to pick four of my favorite things in store. I don't have, I mean, like, there's so many things. I picked out a few. I guess we're going to have to do this a few times because every time I walk around, I discover something else. And I do that. I loved uh, the cutlery. And look at this. There's a smaller version, too. I didn't even see this one. How about that? So if you don't want, you know, that many, you have options. I love that. <laughs> Having options is important. Now, when we're talking about health and healthy living and eating better, one of the things that makes preparation uh, that much easier, it cuts preparation time in half, and it is a whole lot healthier, 
It's the air fryer. Can you believe these are air fryers? If you're anything like me, I'm always peeking in. So the air fryer is frying away or whatever it does. And I have to take it out to look every two minutes. You're not supposed to do that. But with this one, because it's glass, you don't have to worry about that. Look at this. And this particular one comes with a gift. Well, a few gifts. So, like, for example, you know, this that you're going to put on the counter to put this on. Of course, this goes in the bottom, whatever you're frying. And uh, you get this beautiful little mitten to go along with it but what i love most about this particular air fryer is it also comes with a bigger tray that just slots in just like this if i could get it done there we go simple it slots in and all of a sudden you can do your fish or a chicken or whatever outside of the regular little pan so all of this is one air fryer this all of this can you imagine I love it so this is my number three pick for the things that I love and I did quite a bit of searching so but this is amazing I love it and it's a good price as well so when you come by me you definitely will be seeing this and I have something else my final uh, pick the next thing that I have, um, these granite cookware sets just gorgeous and is seven pieces um, anybody who knows me look uh, I love to cook for my little ones my nieces and nephews and all the family that's what I love to do and you know this will make life a whole lot easier and you know we like to fancy fight the kitchen too I mean you don't want the kitchen looking bad while you're cooking right but these are these are absolutely beautiful as well I love that the handles uh, are out of the same that way they don't get hot so sometimes you know you have cookware and then you can't necessarily just touch the top and so on but this is beautiful you have your deep fryer uh well a frying pan but it's deeper than usual if you're going to do your little stir fries smaller pots and then your larger pot so you have nothing to worry about i just happen to love this particular one um uh with the fry pan and all of this but there are different versions that you of course can check out there's even this one with like a wooden top how about that very very gorgeous this one is aluminium so just beautiful accessories to go along with them as well to spruce up your kitchen so if we're talking about making the but these are options and when you send that picture in of that kitchen if it's the kitchen that you want to change you send that into us it goes to the curator uh, here Kimberly and you're going to get to consult with her for free and then of course they're going to help you pull together that space and we're going to share it with everybody else all right so those are my favorite four things I hope that you took note because you just might get a chance to win something if you can list the four favorite things that I told you were my picks we're going to take a break, and when we come back, the retail sales manager here at Standard, Alexia Halliday, is going to join us, and she's going to give us some tips of what we need to do when we are picking appliances. Stay with us. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Coming soon to this station, live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd. BSAC, sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United. As the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win? and which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. 
The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. some things that make mornings even better and one of those things is morning barbados you'll step into your day informed inspired and entertained tune in to cbc tv 8 monday to friday from 6 30 to 8 a.m for morning barbados your morning must have Every day at 7 p.m., we bring you a comprehensive news package because keeping you informed is our number one priority. Whether it's local, regional, or international stories, our commitment is to you and keeping you reliably informed. Join us every day at 7 p.m. for CBC News Night. I'm Anne St. John, a consultant pediatrician. When packing healthy lunch boxes, do include a fruit, which includes a banana, apple, orange, or grapes to supply fiber. Aim for low calorie packaged snacks without the mention of flour or sugar amongst the four, four ingredients on the back label. One in three children in Barbados is affected by overweight, or obesity. Let us join together as parents and care providers to reduce the further development of this chronic non-communicable disease within our communities. Morning Barbados is on the move and we're coming to you every weekday morning from right here at the Standard Showroom in Wilby. Now, together, we're giving you an opportunity to win. All you have to do is submit a photo of that room that you want to see changed in a fantastic way. And the interior design curator here at Standard and all of their experts are going to get together and select the room that needs the most work. It just might be yours. All you have to do is submit your photo to info at standard.bb and you could be here with us saying morning Barbados look at my beautiful space coming soon to this station live coverage of the Barbados Secondary Schools Athletics Championships 2024 from March 20th to 22nd BSAC sponsored by the Student Revolving Loan Fund and CG United as the month turns, there will be no more turns with the running of the 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup. Which horse will win and which jockey will claim the coveted prize of piloting the winning horse over the line? The 2024 Sandy Lane Gold Cup, coming soon to CBC TV8. The facts say Morning Barbados reaches an audience of over 50,000 and Newsnight reaches over 56,000. It's simple. When you advertise, you're getting your message to over 50,000 of your potential customers. Make the call to CBC Sales Department today and watch your business grow. Contact us at 467-5559 or email marketing at cbc.bb. There are some things that make mornings even better. And one of those things is Morning Barbados. You'll step into your day informed, inspired, and entertained. Tune in to CBC TV 8, Monday to Friday from 6.30 to 8 a.m. For Morning Barbados, your morning must have. 
every day at 7 p.m., we bring you a comprehensive news package because keeping you informed is our number one priority. Whether it's local, regional, or international stories, our commitment is to you and keeping you reliably informed. Join us every day at 7 p.m. for CBC Newsnight. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Welcome back. You're at the Standard Showroom in Wildy. We're going to take in a little bit of what's happening outside in just a little bit. But I told you I was going to be joined by the retail manager alexia the beautiful alexia she is always here bright and early with tony and you you guys come in so early you're always ready yes. to go so we're we're talking you want you promised that you were going to share with us a little bit ooh, hot pot they promised you <laughs> promised that you were going to share with us some some tips on what you need to do when you're purchasing appliances so get in here and see exactly what we're cooking yes nothing <laughs> How about that? But the pot was just so gorgeous. I had to put it here. And uh, while you talk, Alexia, I will stir the pot. How about that? Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, you know, we're here at this beautiful uh, Frigidaire gas stove. But what are we looking for? As I mentioned, when, when you want to purchase a stove. Um, this one has a couple other burners. It's a lot different from what I would have experienced uh, in my childhood. Yes. So what are you looking for? So first of all, you need to know the size, the size of the space that you're going to fit it in. Typically, you will get a 30 inch stove. That's standard. Sometimes if you have a smaller apartment, you may need a 24 or, or a 20 inch. Then also, do you want electric or gas? If you need an electric stove, you need to make sure you have a 220 volt um, outlet installed. For the gas stoves, what you need to consider is what type of gas are you using? Are you using natural gas? Are you using LPG or what we call bottle gas? And then whether you're using the small or the large bottle because that determines what you need to have for your stove to work properly. Most of our stoves come to us natural gas ready, but they can be converted for use for LPG, for large or small, but we just need to know what size so that we can convert it for you. So that's a very important question to ask when you're purchasing a gas stove. You need to make sure that the stove that you're purchasing is suitable for the type of gas that you have available. You see, I didn't know that. So, uh, you know, once you purchase the stove, you go ahead and make all the conversions yes. right here in store. And you pick it up and it's just ready to roll. Yep. We all do right. the conversion before we deliver it to you. So by the time it gets to you, it's ready to go. I was also cooking some hot cross buns as we look toward Easter. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. You have to enjoy life, right? All right, look at that. But this is definitely gorgeous. And for me, a big oven is a must. And that's exactly what you get with this one. So you, you want to feel it out. You want to see if it's something that you like and go in there. You want to give that to me? You no, know, the fellas are off to the side. So, you know, they're enjoying it too. Um, a lot of people, you know, they buy ovens and they say, oh, I couldn't fit all the food in. Mm -hmm. So I would imagine it's important to consider your family's needs as well. Exactly. And one of the other things to consider, most of them come standard with two of two. Um, shelves, yeah. but there are some that come with one rack so you need to open the oven and make sure that it does have the two racks that you want and if it doesn't have two racks whether or not you can actually order the extra rack the other thing to consider is whether it has electric ignition or whether you light it with a match some prefer electric ignition we just turn and it ignites or some prefer that they just light it with a match so you need to make sure that the preference that you want is what you're getting in that particular yeah they call oven. that having the pilot Yes. Lit. Yes. I know that. <laughs> All right. So beautiful. Good stuff. This is a good looking stove too. I'd be afraid to cook on this because like everything I cook, it bubbles over. <laughs> well, that is actually a really good point. You don't have to worry about that with this one. Really? Because if you look at the grates on this one, look how easy it is to wipe off and clean. And another thing in terms of maintenance, you're making sure that you unpick all of these and clean them and dry them properly and maintain them, make sure that there are no morsels of food left inside there so that your jets continue yeah. to work so well easy, and so forth. So it's easy to clean. It's very and easy to clean. That's very, very yes. important. 
All right, so that's it for this appliance. The that's next other that. major appliance that most of us will buy is the refrigerator. So come on over here, okay. Alexia. And uh, this refrigerator immediately catches my eye. Mm -hmm. So it is called the InstaView Door Indoor. So you can actually just open. You know how you tell the little ones all the time, keep out the fridge, shut the fridge door, and let's not see you open just the door like a window. It's like a little peekaboo. And you can, you know, grab what you need from in the fridge. And that's it. Or in, in the instance of some of my crew, they'd be grabbing down here. Ruel, Brown, Jade, <laughs> Peter, Chris, yeah? Nadia too, yeah? But that's beautiful. She's in the background saying, yeah, yep. But then you can go ahead and just open the fridge door as well. So, I mean, it's gorgeous, great functionality. I am absolutely loving this particular fridge so you can open the entire fridge door or you can go ahead and just grab something if you need it oh my goodness not to mention you get to see in it so when you walk up it's dark the lights don't stay on but you knock it and you're good to go how about that it's open and the light it lights up so you can see what's happening inside it's like picking a present i have that one sir all right and then of course the next side is your traditional freezer side so uh just a beautiful piece so what are we looking for though alexia when we are selecting a fridge i would imagine that's very very important that's as well very very important refrigerators are one of our top sellers in the store it's a key item in your house you cannot function without a refrigerator first thing is going to be the size that you have available not just the width but the height as well. Sometimes persons don't take into consideration the height. If you have a cupboard above, you need to make sure that you can measure the height. We always have our measuring tapes available in store. The width, if you're looking at a side by side, it's gonna typically be about 36 inches. But if you don't have 36 inches, then you're probably gonna need a top mount or bottom mount fridge, which is our traditional fridge where you have the freeze at the top and then the, the fridge at the bottom. So once you've determined that capacity, you also look at the other appliances that are in the kitchen as well. Are you going back with the other appliances? Are they all stainless steel? Are they white? Are they black? And so forth. So you can make sure that they match. Typically stainless steel, I find matches whether it's white or black. But if you have white appliances, you may want to have all white across. In terms of the capacity of the fridge, that's also very important. If you have a large family, you need to make sure that the capacity suits your needs as well. If you're just one or two persons, you don't have to worry as much about that. It also matters whether you cook a lot and how you shop. Do you do one big shop at the end of the month or do you shop every week? So do you eat a lot of fruits and vegetables? What do is the capacity? Do you have a lot of wine? I, do you have a lot of wine? That's the question. Yes, courtesy of Brighton and Stokes, <laughs> our sister company. <laughs> <laughs> and also the bins at the bottom. Are they the capacity that you need? Sometimes depending on how the bin is positioned, you don't have as much capacity as you think you have. So you need to pull out the bin and double check the capacity of the bin. It may look broad, but how deep is it depending on the size and the capacity of the fridge? So is it gonna hold the amount of vegetables that you need to have in place? I'm so glad that you said that size. because uh, for those of us who go for the vegetables, we usually have bulky veg vegetables. So yes. uh, you wanna make sure that all of those things can definitely fit into uh, the fridge, but this is a this is a board. This is a good size fridge. I, I love it. Uh, I love this peekaboo window in window. There's insta view door in door, not window in window, but it looks like a window, yes. right? So Beautiful. I love that, but definitely some. Uh, so you walk up and you knock the fridge and you get to see what's inside. Um, but definitely some great things to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you, of course. And then if uh, somebody else is, if you're considering uh, maybe a microwave um, yes. or an oven, you have those available as well. These are definitely compact. What are you considering when you're deciding whether, whether you want to go with a tra traditional stove or if you're going to go with a wall-mounted oven? 
so it depends on if you're renovating your kitchen you have that option to be able to position your microwave your oven your stove top exactly where you want it if you are just replacing an item you may not have that option built-in options allow you to be able to position your kitchen or arrange it according to your needs so for instance if you have trouble bending down for an oven positioning an oven at this height is perfect again consider the amount of shelves that are available and whether you can move them and so forth the important thing with these is the cutout dimensions persons will come and they would measure and they would think okay these are the dimensions you need the cutout dimensions from the manufacturer that is what your installer or your contractor is going to need to make sure that the space that you need fits the up uh, the actual oven the, the width of the oven behind here is going to be smaller than what you measure in here it. exactly and the same thing with the microwave with this particular built-in microwave this is a plate that is fitted around the edge yes so you need that's why you would need the cutout dimensions because if you come and you measure this width and this height is not going to be correct okay and then of course uh, as you mentioned size for me i have a big family when i cook I, I need a lot of space to be able to put um, my big dishes in there. Yeah? Exactly. So, you know, lots of options here for you, but uh, very important information. Make sure you measure, measure, measure. Measure, I measure, I think that's measure. all you've been saying. That's very important. One thing I wanted to mention with the fridges as well, because we're in a 50 cycle country, um, most of the appliances we get are going to be 60 hertz. So in many cases, you're going to need a transformer so that it doesn't damage the circuitry. So it's always important to ask whether or not you need a transformer. If it's an inverter fridge, you probably will not need the transformer and also you save on electricity as well. So that's one of the key things to look for as well when you're purchasing a refrigerator. All Alright, so some great things for you to consider when you're doing your big buys. Um, of course, appliances are always big buys for us because they're working every day, but we want them to last a long time. You want to make sure that you get all of the um, interesting tips and very essential tips that Alexia shared with us this morning. Uh, top of your table, make notes so that you can get the exact appliances that suit your pocket and suit your home as well and fit well also. So we wanted to share with you that the Embassy of Japan is pleased to present a Japanese animation lecture on Japanese animation and the content industry, which will be held at the Daphne Joseph Hackett Theater tomorrow, Friday, March 1st, 2024, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. by guest lecturer, Mr. Takahashi. Dean of the Faculty of Digital Communication at the Digital Hollywood University in Japan. So that's happening tomorrow. For more information or to register, you can call the Embassy of Japan at 538-5700. It's Q day. It's Thursday. That means Q is on. So follow us to Q in the community. And today, Q is over in Sturgis in St. Thomas. That's right, at Project House Grounds, Sturgis in St. Thomas. Hosted by Big Ben's Bar, 11 o'clock, Q will be there. Make sure you head on out in your African clothes because today is the final day of February, African Awareness Month. So everybody's coming out to Q today in their African wear. So come out and be a part of that. Of course, you can listen in from 2 to 5 this afternoon to the Q crew uh, taking in the action on Q100.7 FM if you can't make it to the spot. And the Q bus service is in full effect. It's available from gate one at the Granville Williams bus terminal as well. So uh, you have no excuses. You can get on over there. Now, that's it for, for today's show. We fit a lot in here for you, and we most certainly hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you will come on back tomorrow because we have a big show planned. We're going to be discussing the I Am A Girl NGO International Women's Day Workshop as we look towards Women Week next week and International Women's Day next Friday. We have lots planned for you in that regard. The Modern High School Old Scholars Association, they have a week of activities and some of the old scholars are going to be in to talk to us about that. I know a few old scholars who are also um, a part of the CBC family as well. So good morning to you. My father also went to Modern High School. Um, Bajan Firefighters Network to discuss grass fires. They're going to be here to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the free Empower Her Summit that's coming up. Again, as we look towards celebrating women all next week, 
the live hearing screening. We're going to tell you more about that. We had the doctor in at the beginning of the week. We want to make sure that you are a part of that too. And mixologist Lyndon Bavell is going to be with us as we move into this beautiful kitchen space here at Standard. We're also going to be cooking that and a whole lot more as we get you ready for the weekend. That's it from us. Remember to wear your smiles. Do something good for somebody. And see you tomorrow for morning Barbados. Bye bye. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Barbados, get up. Good morning.